Your prestige grows, my lord. News of your conquest spreads far and Shut up, fool. You two, what's going on? Heir of Carthage back, and yes, as per usual, I'm telling Ugly Crow Chaos Guy to shut his trap. And that means we are back in campaign. Back, back, back. Not Gorok this time, but back to Clan Eshin. I need to finish all these things. I've been very... I, I had a whole week off work. And I'm... I was expecting a lot of videos done. I just was having so much fun with my boys. <laughs> um, I didn't get as much videos done. But I think you all can forgive the reason, right? If I'm out there having fun with the boys... I think you all can forgive me. Um, let's get some extra food in public order. Yes, we shall. Anyway, Clan Eshin. We've got some schemeses? Yes, yes. Let's do some Where are the shadowy dealings here? What we got? Small heist? We need cash? Eh. Increases research rate by 20% for five turns. Do you have to pick a... select a target on the campaign map? I guess you have to pick an enemy settlement? Huh? No, it says, um... Target Skaven settlements only. I think you're supposed to, like, target other clans, is what it sounds like. Steal- oh, well, yeah. Steal Skaven technology. I guess you gotta read the whole thing here. Yes, yes. Well, we're definitely going for a heist then. Snitch, go heisting. Okay. Stalk them. Yeah. All right, we're going to save our next shadowy dealing so I can kind of see everything going on in the... We're going to go invade Malice. Try and put Malice out of business, but I got to finish the replenishment here. Finish the replenish. I didn't intend for that to rhyme. You know, it just, it came out that way. That's all there is to it. It just, it came out that way. Infiltrator, Night Runners, and Gutter Runners. I mean, that is going to be pretty important over the long run. Dictatorial, recruitment cost, ambush chance. Ambush chance! If we can get like 100% ambush chance, that'd be great. All right. Snitch is almost ready. He thinks he's ready, but he's actually got more replenishment to do, so I'm going to go into this encamp stance. Because that'll uh, buff up our replenishment. Um, speaking, speaking of, I'm going to get rid of one of my gutter runner slingers and replace it with the um, uh, Natty Bubos. And then four turns from now, we'll be able to bring back our Regiment of Renown. Um, Storm Vermin! Good grief, man. Where is my head right now? A scryer contract received. Clan scryer can shove it. Lord of the I'm not interested in clan scryer. I am going to wait one more turn to get all my guys replenished. And then we'll go down and uh, see what we can do to malice. So we can upgrade flayed rock. I would like to do so. We need defenses there. Eats Eats a tribe is destroyed. That means that uh, malice has been busy. Might be a little bit uh, worse for weather here. Let's sneak in right here and see what we're up against. That is not Malice, and we do have Sisters of Slaughter. Uh, we don't want to get a melee with them, but we should be able to slaughter them. I'd like to find Malice's army. It's going to either be over here or over here, and that's where I was hoping the shadowy dealing would come into play. Sneaky scouting, right? Firm. Okay, he's cheating. He's a... Well, no, he's not that cheating. Just a little bit of cheating here. I mean, he could probably afford the one stack for sure. I don't know about Sisters of Slaughter in a second stack, so a little bit of cheating, but... We're gonna head over here and try and get Malice first, because then whatever he has left will probably be quite a bit weaker. Uh, more ambush chance. Speed for infantry units. Armor for clan rats, melee defense for Skaven slaves. I mean, does upgrading Skaven slaves actually do anything? I mean, someone tell me that. 
All right, Malice is rebuilding, and they want me to go kill dwarf things, which is typically, uh, you know, an admirable goal for any Skaven, to be sure. But uh, I'm sneaksing into Dark Elf territory right now. Sneaking. Here we go. All right, Malice went into a raiding stance and stood right in my face. He's got a lot of very dangerous infantry here. And these long-range bolt throwers. Now, we also should remember that we're within range of his black arc. Which means that he will have bombardments. Kane's Lash, Sky Cauldron, Dark Conduit, Soul Rain. Bolt of Spite. Good grief. So there's going to be lots going on. But if we pull off the ambush here, it'd be huge. Stab. Stab kill. Yes, yes. Oh yeah, we got the ambush, baby. That means that we're going to take these Reaper Bolt Throwers out of play almost immediately. So this should be fun. Alright, and the ambush of Malice Darkblade is underway. It's going to get hit hard by Skaven, stopped in place. And then just look at the uh, missile fight back here. Just almost utter annihilation of the Dark Riders. And Malice Darkblade sounds himself getting hit by the shadow. Lord of Assassins. And uh, Malice is not going to be loving life right now. He's taking a beating at the hands of Snitch. The infantry is struggling, and they got bottled up, and I was able to unleash a Dark Whirlwind here. Take down a huge number of enemies, plus use my special ability. And the reign of rat -a -tat, -a tat is going to be constant back here in the back. And then uh, Malice Darkblade is getting bested by Snitch. He hasn't given up yet. He's called in his master to help protect him. You can see some bombardments going on in the background. And Malice chosen to run. Try and let his crony fight for him. But Snitch is having none of it. Malice is gone. And uh, I'm going to go knock out his lackey as well. And you can see that that is the end of his army. And a very successful start to the invasion of the Dragon Isles. I am testing out cinematic battles in this campaign, now, as you clearly saw. <laughs> and a massive victory for us there against Malice Darkblade. That was an absolute, I mean, just slaughter of Malice Darkblade. So, Snitch making the first statement here in this uh, battle of DLC characters. Finds himself in very bad shape. Another ambush. Oh, I love the ambush. I hate it when you're playing against game. It is so annoying, and they get it so often. <laughs> but now that it's my turn, now that it's my turn, I have a big, big enjoyment of this. So I don't really know where to place this magic resistance. It's not the most helpful thing, honestly. Unless I just get lucky and pit it on something that gets hit hard. Now we have a bunch of food. I kind of think about just uh, spending some of it. Ooh, it gets zap zap. It gets zap zap. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, we don't have trade yet, but I am going to go ahead and build up those capabilities. Let's just spend that money. Let's see what we got here. From a Regiment of Renown standpoint. We're going to replace one of our Gutter Runner Slingers with Ickit Zap Zap. Clearly a worthy trade. Oh, we got the Avalanche Mortars too. Oh my goodness, and the Blight Scaps Blade Pack. Oh yes, yes. Yeah, yep. Here we go. Here we go. Fun time has begun. Recruit those guys in. Now, uh, Clan Rats with Shields. Pretty sure we can boot these guys. And replace them with the Council Guard. Oh man. Now we're talking. These uh, Avalanche Mortars are a really cool unit. Um, very excited. We have some insane skirmish power in this army. Like, I mean, we can do just horrendous damage to people at range. But you know what? We're Skaven. Uh, that shouldn't be entirely uh, surprising. Tutorial Looter. With Untainted, and then the next one we can do Draft Master. 
We could try a shadowy dealing here. We got concealment bombs, Cathayan training. Are you making hints here, CA? You making hints? I better see him in here. Actually, I'm gonna do this one. Wow, minus four for the upgraded brittle bone. Brittle bone is, I mean, just horrendous because it takes away so much melee defense. Like it is a very effective spell now. It's very expensive winds of magic, but here in campaign where you can do all that work, yeah, you know, it's not so bad, right? You can, you can put it to a uh, good use. Does this one increase effect here? Yeah, this could be a good one too, being able to put armor all over your Skaven. Yep, I like it. I like it quite a lot, in fact. Oh man, we got some good Regiment of Renown right now. Got some really good stuff. Restores all units and forces to full health immediately and returns wounded characters. No, oh my gosh, we're gonna make use of that. Not at this moment, but soon. Now the AI has fallen back to Dreadrock and they're no doubt gonna use their near limitless funds. Um, in order to just start recruiting like crazy, so I'm going to immediately pressure them at Dreadrock. And uh, not worry about Dragonfang Mount at the moment. We've got buildings underway there. Our income is, of course, down with some of these more expensive troops, but we should be okay. Okay, Dreadrock can now be sieged. And we put the kill down on him pretty fast here. Malice got hit hard. Very hard. Uh, we're gonna siege him now. I mean, I don't have a lot of infantry, but I think if we're patient, we should be able to pull this off. So let's fight it. <clears throat> All right, the siege of Dreadrock is underway, and uh, it gets zap zap is gonna start destroying towers. I'm gonna bring up Bubos and some of my support units here to uh, go after the wall. These are the warp grinders. They've been um, they've been skitter leaped right now. And I'm bringing up, I don't love doing this, but I'm going to bring up my gutter runners in order to kind of draw the fire of some of the many, many crossbows on the wall. I am going to unleash the mortars here too. And those mortars, if they can get the right angle, will be pretty effective against infantry. But the walls will interrupt their capability at times, so I don't expect something perfect here. Now you can see that the black arc... Um, the Black Arc abilities are going to be targeted starting on my Warp Grinders. Not something I love right now, so I'm going to see if I can dodge that ability just a little bit. And my guys lost their attack order on this wall over here for some reason. These guys managed to get in here and take a nasty hit. See that bombardment hurt pretty bad, and they're being shot through the wall. I don't know how this is possible. I think you all saw some... Look at that. There's bolts going through the wall right here. CA, please. How's it even possible? These guys lost their attack order again, I believe. But anyway, our mortars are doing a little bit of work. We've taken some pretty significant damage to some of our uh, gutter runners, so that's not ideal. And the Warp Lightning Cannon does a lot less to the Fort Towers than I thought it would. So we find ourselves in a pretty tough start here, actually. This unit, because it's being shot through the wall, was taking quite a bit of damage, so this Warp Grinder was on the verge of routing. I got very lucky there that it's not gone. And this tower's still alive, which... It's not great for me. I'm going to go ahead and start using the special abilities on this unit just to kind of tear apart these uh, crossbowmen a little. I think finally my units are going to get an attack order on the fort wall over here. Yep. There we go. So we're going to keep warp grinding our way through the enemy walls and kind of cut away in. Well, like I said, the warp lightning cannon should eventually take the towers out of commission. I'll let you all see that here momentarily. You can see we just got one hole in the wall. Now we should see the end of the tower coming shortly. It believes to be the final volley. So the tower is down. And you can see Natty Bubo is doing a little bit of sniping. And then our warp grinders hard at work on the foundation of this wall. This is such a cool unit. <laughs> really fun in campaign. A fun way to be able to break through walls relatively quick, especially when it's supported with Skitter Leap. I don't know how they survived the wall basically falling on their head, but they did. I'm going to make one more hole in the wall. And I'm going to continue to use my mortars and other units. I've got the next tower targeted. And I'm moving around a few units because they're taking some tower fire and fire from the uh, crossbows on the walls as well. I'm going to keep picking um, the best blob of infantry that I can find here. i got to hit play there. And I'm going to continue to unleash the mortars on it. 
let you all catch some of the sweet siege action here. High elves thinking that their walls will keep them safe. These mortars have got to be some of the coolest looking units in the game in terms of the animation that they play. It is really some good looking stuff. Unfortunately though, my mortars are under a little bit of fire here, so I'm going to have to move up some, uh, some units to support them. They've got some uh, crossbows back here behind the wall that are firing up and over at my mortar units. Lots of pendulums coming out of the garrison. That's two at least, and I know there's a third. It will be coming soon enough. Yeah, you can see the mortars definitely working their uh, their wonder up on the walls. And I sent a unit in here. I think it was just a summoned unit. And the Dark Elves, like, unleashed their Black Arc abilities on it, but instead just absolutely wiped out their own troops at the gate. So that was really brilliant on their part. I'm glad that the AI is so good with their management. Over here, I was about to take a hit from this and actually just decide to withdraw the Warp Grinder weapons team at the last second so that I don't get taken out by the uh, ability from the Black Art. Because I don't need that Warp Grinder um, at this at this juncture. I'm pretty sure I'm safe without it. So I'm going to let my Gutter Runners do just a little bit of work here just to keep these guys busy while we finish up the preparations. You can see here comes the Clan Vulcan Tail Slashers. These guys, everything on fire. And then we're going to have uh, some storm vermin with sword and shields coming in as well. So some pretty heavy units moving up. And behind them we'll get some blight scabs and some warp grinders and other units and start to move in. This fight's not going to be over yet. Not by any stretch of the imagination. But I do have, I think, what will be a pretty nice trick up my sleeve for the Dark Elves. Very, very scaven of me. I'll let you all see it in a moment. Look at this pendulum. Looks like it was supposed to bounce away, and then it bounces right back and kills half, like half the hit points, basically, on my Storm Vermin. Bunch of, well, I'll let you pick the words for it, but then they're also going to drop all their Black Art stuff here. And the AI is just loving all these abilities, and they're causing a lot of damage to what little infantry I had. I had hoped that putting my other units up front would bait some of that, but it's not really working the way I want to. I used the special ability on my... Uh, triads, my Regiment of Renown Triads, and this is a fake unit basically, but the AI can't tell that, and they're gonna attack it, and so I think you all know what I have in store for them, since this is a fake unit on my part. Merry schemes, jerks! So I'm gonna get a massive black whirlwind off here, and I want you all to just see the damage that we inflict. That was a unit of Sisters of Slaughter. And then a second unit of Sisters of Slaughter walked in there at the last second too or is able to cause even more damage, so tremendous damage. And I'm going to use a summon unit to keep holding these units out of the fight while I continue to move more units into play. And then we really need to get Snitch in here to assassinate the leadership of the enemy. And I'm going to have to wait on another spell potentially, but all this stuff is drawing in the uh, Wrath of the Black Ark, fortunately, because it's focused here rather than on my good units. I say that. One of my triads just took a nasty hit there. Here comes Snitch. He's going to try and cut his way through to some enemy leadership. The um, Shadow Sorceress acts like she wants a piece of him. I'm going to use his uh, Whirlwind ability there to knock some people back. Allow him to get a chance to fight. Send him over towards the Shadow Sorceress. He's able to cut his way through. Begin the process of assassinating. My Blight Scabs are not really liking being around these Sisters of Slaughter. That is not an ideal place for them. And Snitch will be able to pretty quickly cut down the Shadow Sorceress. Though the other Dark Elf leaders here will be a little tougher. I'm using my Warp Grinders to kind of damage up all these units too. I'm trying to... Pun intended, I guess. I'm trying to grind the enemies down here. So you can see that Snitch able to cut through the Shadow Sorceress. He's now faced with a Death Hag. And despite just really being much better than the Death Hag, it's like no matter what, I just can't land any hits on her. I don't know if it was the infantry around here, but the Death Hag just sits here near Snitch for a long time and has very little damage done. And then, of course, we have a Dreadlord with Sword and Shield in the garrison as well. And this Dreadlord, also a fairly tough character. Snitch is going to go ahead and take a run at him. Let's see if he can get him out of the game. And then, meanwhile, my infantry is pushing back here, trying to cut through these Black Art Corsairs. 
And I'm going to attempt to get my gutter runners through this small gap here so I can start chasing back those crossbows. The mounted crossbows. There also is a Sisters of Slaughter back here, so I do have to be careful. This unit is uh, going to be very good against most of my infantry, so I'm going to keep my gutter runners away from it and throw in my uh, death runners. Again, not an ideal unit to be fighting this, along with the Blight Sclabs. Both of them are going to not be great against Sisters of Slaughter, but I'm left with few options. I'm able to pull together what's left of my Skaven over here and continue to fight against the leadership. See the Dreadlord there? You can see that uh, I've gone ahead and frozen him in place with the Deathmaster. And the Deathmaster is going to roll in here and attempt to uh, take him out. Lots of abilities going off in here, and my troops pay pretty massively for it. But you can see the Dreadlord starting to take a lot of damage. And the Death Hag, who did manage to evade death earlier and acting like she's great, uh, has now found herself the target of affection for some Natty Boobos. And I've also got my uh, Regiment of Renowned uh, Rattling Gun team in here. So she won't be alive much longer. I just have to move out of the way a little bit and open up a lane. And we'll continue to fire. Snitch is working the uh, Dreadlord who is going to be attempting to flee, <clears throat> though we're not going to let him get away. The Death Hag was shot down, and there is nothing left to have taken the settlement. Let's get a little pew-pew for the uh, outro, shall we? Yes, we shall. Light him up, boys. Light him up. <laughs> Barely any Dark Elves left to fire at. All right, it was a little bit crazier than I wanted, but we made it. We actually lost a unit of Eshin Triads. It's kind of crappy. I mean, that unit's not amazing, and we do have the Ishka's Triads in its stead. We managed to get away with the Blight Scabs, which is important. So let's go ahead and uh, occupy the settlement. And then I'm going to see here. I'm going to immediately replenish this army with that ritual. Let's perform the right. Alright, so they are completely replenished. There's nothing quick that I can get into this army, but we can continue uh, as is whenever we get our movement points back. I think that we've done tremendous damage to Malice, obviously, here, which has been pretty important for us. Let's get Armor of Darkness set up. So yeah, I mean, uh, his faction's in some pretty big doo-doo here. Jar Jar Binks way of saying things. Not that I enjoy that, but you know, just figured we'd have a little fun. So we got this uh, Den of Dread Deeds. Also got this other building here. Rattling Guns and Poison Wind Globadiers. Hit upgrades to give us Warplock Gisales, Death Globes, and Poison Wind Mortars. Ooh! The mortars. Those mortars are so much fun. So much fun. They are so good. I feel like we need to uh, get some specialty stuff going on. Rat ogres would be cool to have. Plague monks would be cool infantry, but we're about to go up against dwarves. They won't be particularly helpful against dwarves. Uh, we'd need some armor piercing, which would really come from the plague monks, sensor bearers, or some storm vermin because of their shielding. Uh, doom flayers would be very good against the dwarves, so that that might be a consideration there. The Doom Flayers are quite good at taking out dwarves, Plague Priest, I mean, Rat Ogres, we do need some movement. I say that, though. We kind of have that with our Gutter Runners. Hmm. Just can't make up my mind here. Sensor Bearers are nice because they're armor-piercing. The only downside against Dwarves, obviously, is that they have no shields. So if we played it careful, that could be a way to do things. We'll see whether or not it's the right way. Let's go ahead and repair the only building we have here. All right. So here we are on the other side of this turn end. Got a little bit of cash. I'm going to just force march down here as quick as I can and take Dragonfang Mount. Then there won't be any settlements in this vicinity left Definitely for these few Dark Elves. 
I have some defense here at Shattered Stone Isle, so they're not going to easily get to that one with that small force that they have. So that puts me in pretty good position. Let's save some money and in another turn. Alright, we are ready to take Dragon Fang Mount, which is not at all prepared to fight us. So we will easily take it, occupy it. So that is going to get rid of all of their territory. They do not have a home region, so they must have given up their holding in Nagarond. Unfortunate for them, quite fortuitous for me. Let's go ahead and just spend some money on the defenses. We may have trade soon. I'm going to keep some untainted buildings here. And let's see, we got Zap Spark. He's picked himself up yet another skill point. Let's finish um, Rat Karuda. Melee defense and missile defense. I mean, melee defense is never a bad thing. Uh, gaining unit experience. I mean, it could help finish off this army. Lord. Could help. I'm going to go ahead and do it. Get draft master, and then that'll allow us to start getting quartermaster and lightning strike. Should both be potentially helpful later. Plus three scaven corruption. That's awful. Public order plus two and untainted. Could go with some growth for now. But I'm not too worried about it. Let's just do this one. All right. Since we received a Pestilence contract, I'm not going to worry about that contract at the moment, obviously, but I am going to pull off a heist. See if we can get some money. We're going to have to find a region that we can rob. <laughs> it's way off over here. Love it. Get a heist going. Grants an ancillary. Let's see what we get. Shadows hide. What do we get? Something nice? Corrosive blade? Eh. It's not not horrible. I mean, as you can tell, I'm not particularly excited, but it could have been worse things to pick up. And then these uh, dealings, of course, have allowed us to get two points towards Quartermaster, which that fixes our money situation even better. I bring pain I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to move up to this point and then move across over here and see if we can pin down Malice Darkblade, who's come back from having been wounded. We're about to potentially get a rebellion here in this province, but we can obviously put that down relatively quick by getting back over there. Alright, so Malice Darkblade thinks that he can take me down. I don't think so. We shall see. Alright, so Malice Darkblade is hoping that the auto-resolve will buy him some freedom here. So he's brought his force around my flanks, hoping to pick off a somewhat weak settlement, but I was able to get defenses built in the settlement just before he arrived. And I do have a number of Night Runners and Gutter Runners leading the way. And as you all know, these units get armor piercing with Clan Eshin, and they're going to be very effective skirmishers for me in this fight. So there are a number of Dark Riders. The Dark Riders are going to be uh, probably first priority here in terms of what needs to be killed. They do have shields, so will make them a little more resistant to the missiles that I have out. <clears throat> they won't be able to resist at all. I'm going to summon up a clan rat here to meet the charge of the Black uh, Blackheart Corsairs just to keep them back. And this also manages to draw down some of the Wrath of Admiral Leech and his Black Arc in the distance. I don't know how he fires where he's at. I mean, that's pretty impressive. I guess it's magic, though, right? It is a Black Arc. It's, it's a rock that floats with a city on it, so things are pretty easy to believe still. see the Dark Riders pushing in here. I do have um, a Warlock Engineer, and I used it to drop some Warp Lightning right before my troops routed. That was my summon troops. And we've gotten the attention of the uh, the uh, Dark Riders here, and they've come in to fight Clan Rats with Spears, and they're going to be rained on by Poison Wind Globideers, so it's not going to be ideal for the Dark Elves. Those units are very important for them, and they're losing them early. 
You can see my Poison Land Globadiers in a good position on top with my Warlock, and they're protected by Spearmen. My infantry is just going to have to absorb the Wrath of the Dark Elves here. There's not much I can do to help them. The Master is in there. Then Malice is uh, on his way in, too. He's out here, dropping his abilities. I'm also summoning the uh, the Black Arc abilities uh, against me. I'm, I, I should say I'm drawing them against me, which is kind of good. I'm going to be continue to be chased by Dark Riders over here. It's not ideal. The more of these units I lose, the harder it is to kill the Lords, and I really need these armor-piercing skirmishers to kill the enemy Lords, but this is a necessary part of the battle for me to get rid of this cavalry. And this cavalry is not going to be able to kill... Uh, these type of skirmishers, so they're really kind of getting drawn into their own death, though they will get some damage done. And every unit I have that dies with ammunition is kind of unfortunate for me. You see that black arc just raining it all over here. Sometimes it, uh, earlier on in the battle, was working in my favor when there was some Dark Elf troops around that they were friendly firing. You can see that most of their horsemen are gone at this point, which is really going to leave us to deal with Malice and Zoram here, his master. Ooh, another near miss here. It's going to be some Black Arc Lightning coming down on us out here. Few horsemen have regrouped out here, but they're going to be somewhat weak as well. And so I should be in a good position to finish all this stuff off. Now some of the regrouped horsemen come at me here in the back. And I'm going to be able to push them back with my Warlock Engineer and some Spearmen who are nearby. So this will be a pretty futile attack. And I've now got my skirmishers moving along the flank and getting in a position to start picking at the enemy leadership. So now you can see that we're going to effectively start tearing into him. And I'll kind of let you all see what happens. That was just one quick shot at Malice. Now we're going to focus on Zoram. See the cavalry gone now, so they really don't have anything else to come at me. I'm going to keep Malice back with a summon unit because if he uses his special abilities or the Black Arc abilities on it, that it's a wasted use for him because my summon units are going to die anyway. We're going to go ahead and skirmish back here momentarily. This one unit had run out of ammo and got itself into melee. But I'm going to keep skirmishing. His shield will help him, but he's going to be getting peppered with a bunch of Skaven garbage here. Lots of shots coming in, and he's got his back turned to my other skirmishers, so the Master ought to die pretty quick. I'm going to kind of fast forward just to show you what happens. I'm just going to start kiting him to death. And so that takes the Master out of the ball game. And now we're going to bring it against Malice Darkblade, and he's going to find himself in a similar position. Though he is a little bit tougher, and he's going to take a considerable amount of skirmishing to get him off the battlefield. I'm trying to drop the uh, Poison Wind on him as well, though they're not very effective against a single infantry model like Malice. I'm just going to have to keep skirmishing him with my Night Runners and Gutter Runners. They're really going to be the most effective means I have. And eventually, if we do enough damage to him, he'll kind of start to give up his leadership. And that'll be the end of it. Are they? That that looks like Skaven. No, okay. I thought it was like Skaven droppings they were throwing at him. That's that's actually pretty crazy. That's like the end of a mace or something they threw at him. It looks terribly painful. The Skaven are getting such things for their slingers, but it doesn't look pleasant. Almost looks like the Sword of Cain that he's wielding there, but we know it's not. So he's going to be chasing our uh, skirmishers. He's not going to be able to catch anything. I'm just going to keep everything a step in front of him. May miss Rikro a little bit here or there, but you can see his hit points are going to slowly evaporate. And I do mean slowly. He was very tough here. And if I had thrown stuff into melee against him, we might might have lost. I even tried a cheeky warp lightning on him. And that's going to be the end of Malice. I'm going to unceremoniously chase him down with my units. And uh, I'll let you all see that. Albeit fast forwarded because it does take a long time. And this is going to be the end of his faction. Well, not the end of his faction, but it'll be the end of him for now. And the essential end of his faction. And oh boy. Cue up the chase music here. You see how far they had to chase him. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. What was he? Strength rank 12? Not anymore. Not anymore. Alright. Well, we have pretty much taken Malice out of the fight. I say pretty much. Because unfortunately not entirely. If I force March, I can get... Kind of close to him, I guess. 
he can't get past the settlement back that way, so we want to pin him this way. So let's see if we can take him out real quick and then be done with this episode. Alright, it looks like that they're just going to go ahead and suicide on our settlement. And we've got him. Uh, we could replenish, but let's see if we can get some food, actually. So that really, I think, just leaves Admiral Leech here as the sole survivor. Of course, he's going to run away farther than we can get to him. Um, yeah, he went into like a force march type of thing almost. Uh, let's just... He's going to just keep running from me, unfortunately. So, we're just going to leave him alone, and I will see you all in the next episode, Heir of Carthage, signing out.